Are you curious about how your environment impacts your fertility? We have talked on the show a lot about toxins, household products, BPA, etc. But what about your air quality? How does air quality, air pollution, maybe smoke from wildfires impact your fertility and your chances for success for building your family? That is what we're going to talk all about today on the show. I'm your host, Dr. Laura Shaheen. I am a double board certified OBGYN and reproductive endocrinologist, helping answer questions for people about how to maximize their fertility for over 20 years. And with the recent LA fires, we were recording this in February 2025. Those fires in the Palisades and close by Malibu were absolutely devastating. And unfortunately, wildfires, which cause smoke and cause air pollution, are a part of our existence now, especially on the West Coast. I practice in Seattle, and we've had horrible wildfires in the summer, uh, you know, Oregon, Portland. There's an incredible study that we're going to go over today looking at how air quality can impact embryos growing in the lab. So this is such an important topic, and we are going to go all over how air quality, uh, both outside your home and inside your home and in the IVF lab, can impact your fertility, your outcomes for success. And I'm going to leave you with some valuable tips on how to improve your air quality. We can make a difference in this issue, and you're going to learn so much today. Let's get started. I have lived and practiced in Seattle since 2009. I love the Pacific Northwest. It's an absolutely beautiful place to be. But year after year, it seems like wildfires are a part of being here in the summer. Um, and it's happening all over Canada and California. And wildfires can happen lots of different places, but still impact our air quality. So when I saw a study published from OHSU, that's Oregon Health and Sciences University in Portland, which is pretty close by to Washington, talking all about air quality impacting IVF success rates, I paid attention. Air quality is becoming a real issue, and I wanted to learn more and be able to share with you, as well as my patients, the importance of paying attention to air quality and what we can do to improve our own air quality and hopefully our own fertility. So today we're going to go over the research and exactly what it says about air quality impacting female fertility, male fertility, and IVF success rates. We're going to review what an IVF lab can do to make sure that the air quality is the best it can possibly be to protect those eggs, sperm, and embryos. And I'll give you 10 helpful tips to improve air quality in your own Home. Now let's get started. First topic, research. What does the research show? There's three studies I want to share with you. And the first one I want to share with you is that study from OHSU looking at poor air quality in the setting of wildfires and its impact on IVF success rates. This study by OHSU was published in Fertility and Sterility in the summer of 2024, and it was looking back at the really significant wildfires that we had in 2020 and how it impacted IVF success rates in the lab surrounding the IVF cycles that went through during that time. It's a retrospective cohort study of 69 patients that were going through their IVF cycles, and it records exactly what happened. Researchers found that wild fire smoke exposure impacted blastocyst formation rate in the lab. So after fertilization and egg and sperm come together, the embryo grows. And after about five, six, sometimes seven days, a blastocyst will form. This is a fully mature embryo. It's about 100 to 120 cells. And this is the embryo that we usually transfer. Someone's getting pregnant right away, or maybe we freeze to save for a frozen embryo transfer in the future. So the fewer blastocysts you have, the fewer chances of a successful outcome for your IVF cycle. Fortunately, the pregnancy outcomes didn't differ very much in people that were exposed to the wildfire, and that's very reassuring. But it is important that this study is looking at the impact of wildfires and comparing outcomes to when people were exposed and how it can really impact IVF success rates. Now, this is not the first time that people have looked at air pollution or air quality or wildfires and its impact on fertility. And the second study I want to show is a wonderful, excellent, thorough review of this topic that was published in 2018. And this 
group of reviewers looked at a lot of different studies that were published up until that date, looking at air pollution, air quality, wildfires, and female fertility in order to try to find some sort of recommendation or evidence to really support our worry that air pollution and air quality can impact female fertility. The hard part about this review, and the authors review this at length, is that there is no standard way of assessing air quality. A lot of the studies will look at particulate matter in the air. A lot of studies will look at carbon dioxide levels in the air. Um, a lot of studies are looking at certain levels, but it's not standardized. Some studies are in different countries. In the United States, the EPA will often uh, give a lot of information on air quality that people can then use to look at reflect in studies. But it's also hard to make comparisons because it's every study will define female fertility differently. So this review article is excellent and it helps go through a lot of the studies that were done before. Sometimes people will see irregular menstrual cycles with poor air quality. Sometimes people will see longer time to getting pregnant or a higher chance of infertility, but with different standards of measurement and different outcomes that the researcher are looking at, it's hard to give a definitive answer as to exactly what air pollution or poor air quality can do to female fertility, even though it makes biologic plausibility. In the discussion, the authors do a really good job trying to pull together a lot of information from a lot of different studies. And they're talking about, we do have excellent research that air pollution causes cancer, causes other health issues. And certainly some substances in the air can act like endocrine disruptors. And we know that endocrine disruptors can impact the function of our hormones and our ovulation and our time to pregnancy and our increased risk of miscarriage. Certainly some substances in air pollution can increase oxidative stress and really impact the way our cells are functioning on a genetic or DNA level. So there are many different ways to look at this and many different ways to think about it, but the studies really do show that this is something that we should pay attention to in female fertility. What about male fertility? Well, their third study I want to share with you is actually looking at air pollution, air quality, and its impact on sperm parameters and function. And in short, it matters. So this was an impressive study. In the study, over 21,000 semen analysis from two of the largest healthcare systems in Utah were compared with location data and air pollution data from the EPA or the Environmental Protection Agencies. So it was incredible. These researchers combined how much pollution was going on in the air and the location of where these semen analysis were collected and where the men lived over the previous five years leading up to the collection of the semen analysis. And with the location data, with the EPA air pollution data, and the semen analysis, they combined all of this information and found that in areas with the highest air pollution, specifically high levels of endocrine disruptors, that semen analysis results were significantly lower, lower numbers, lower motility, lower morphology. It's a fascinating way to look at this information and collect information uh, in a huge way with lots and lots of numbers. So in short, air quality for male factor fertility, it matters. We're going to get back to learning more about air quality and what you can do about it to improve your fertility in just a second. But I want to remind you how important it is to support the show. We are over 100 episodes into this incredible show, and the community we have built here has been amazing. And so please, if you are finding this valuable, follow the show wherever you are listening. That really helps us. And if you could take another minute to give us a review absolutely incredible. So if you're finding this valuable, follow the show, rate the show, give us a review or share it with someone who is going to really appreciate learning from this incredible information. Now let's get back to learning. So now that I've got your attention about the research and shared the studies with you, what can we do to make a difference? Well, you think about climate change, you think about your IVF lab if you're doing IVF, and then you think about your own home and what you can control in your own environment to make your air quality better. Climate change, that is a big topic, and I think it's in matters, I think it's important, but it's not something that I can fix right now. So air quality is extremely important in an IVF lab. 
lab, and it absolutely impacts success rates. Volatile organic compounds, or VOCs, microbes and perfumes, which are full of endocrine disruptors, can harm embryo development. You have to think about the, how you clean the lab, you have to think about how you filter the air, and lots of steps can be taken. Solid steps that are taken in my lab, Pacific Northwest Fertility in Seattle, are everybody uh, changes when they come in from the outer environment into scrubs. Very few people are allowed in and out of the IVF lab to decrease the amount of traction and amount of people coming in and out of the lab. HEPA filters are used to remove airborne particles. Positive air pressure can be used to force air through filters that help remove move particles and VOCs. Airflow monitoring is very important. We have regular and routine HVAC maintenance, and we're very careful about the cleaning products that we use to decrease exposure. So that's wonderful, and the IVF lab is extremely important. But now what about your home? You can control your home environment and help improve your air quality. And this is helpful whether you're doing IVF or not. So here are 10 solid tips on how to improve your air quality at home. Step number one, ventilation. If air quality outside is good, open your windows, even if it's only 15 minutes a day. If you're in the middle of wildfires or significantly poor air quality, you want to keep the windows shut. Step number two, invest in houseplants. Houseplants can actually get endocrine disruptors out of the air and they can increase the amount of oxygen in your home. It's not a dramatic change, but it can be helpful. And three types of plants that are especially good are spider plants, snake plants, and peace lilies. Step number three, replace your air filters regularly. If you have an HVAC system, the recommendation is to change the filters every three months. This can really help remove some particles in the air, especially if you have pets, if you have a lot of dust, that HVAC filtering system can be really helpful. Step number four, think about the humidity of your home. If your air is too dry, dust and allergens are easier to lift up and kind of get into your lungs. And so you want to add some moisture to the air in your home in order to help contain those airborne particles. Now, on the flip side, if your air is too humid, then mold can grow. So you want to keep humidity between 30 and 50%. Step number five, clean. Dust, mop, vacuum regularly. Step number six, avoid synthetic fragrances. No air fresheners, no candles. Now there can be some safer options, but really think through your household cleaning products. Really think through spraying air fresheners or kind of using those plugins. A lot of these products are actually putting endocrine disruptors into the air and you are breathing them in and they can impact your overall health and your reproductive health. Step number seven, invest in an air purifier, especially in your bedroom. We spend a lot of time asleep and breathing that air in your bedroom. An air purifier with a HEPA filter can really filter out some dust, allergens, and particulate matter. Step number eight, take your shoes off. You don't want to bring all of the allergens and particles and fertilizer and all the things that you're stepping on outside into your home. It's a great idea to take your shoes off at the door and change it to some really comfy slippers. Step number nine, keep your pets groomed. Brush them, decrease allergens, decrease particles. And our pets love to go outside and run around and all the things that I just described, uh, pollution, fertilizer, you know, things like that. And so if you can brush and decrease the particles that your pet is bringing into your home, it's going to decrease exposure and improve your home air quality. Step number 10, think about smoke. Absolutely no smoking, tobacco or vaping in your home. If you're cooking, have excellent ventilation uh, above your stove. Make sure your exhaust fans are working well in your home. And there you have it, 10 easy steps that you can do today to improve the air quality in your home, which may even improve your fertility. I hope you found this episode valuable. If you did, share it with a friend, share it with a family member. I think there's so much to learn about improving the home that we live in, our own environment, and how it can improve not only our reproductive health, but our overall health and well-being. So follow the show wherever you're listening. Give us a rate. A five-star review would be absolutely amazing if you're finding it valuable. Um, I want to thank my team at Audiotocracy for producing the show. Uh, this is your host, Dr. Laura Shaheen. And until next week, wishing you love, luck, and pineapples.